I think we'd all agree that pain management is one of the cornerstones of veterinary medicine as a whole. But in order to select appropriate analgesic agents, we have to have a fundamental understanding of pain physiology. Most commonly, pain is initiated when a noxious thermal, chemical, or mechanical signal, like a surgical incision, stimulates a peripheral pain receptor called a nociceptor. This nociceptor converts the signal into a nerve impulse in a process called transduction. This signal then travels along the sensory nerve to the spinal cord in a process called transmission. And once that signal has finally reached the spinal cord, it can be altered there by local mechanisms and from input from the brain in a process called modulation. Finally, the signal then projects up the spinal cord to a number of regions in the brain where perception takes place and the signal is experienced consciously as pain. This is a basic pain pathway, but when pain is ongoing or not adequately treated, the mechanisms of peripheral and central sensitization also take place. And this amplifies the pain signal, which intensifies the experience for the patient and also makes it more challenging to treat pain effectively. To minimize sensitization or prevent it, we need to treat pain preemptively and provide sufficient ongoing analgesic therapies to cover the duration of pain. And when we think about pain, we have to remember that it's far more than just an unpleasant sensory experience. The pain pathways we just discussed trigger a range of physiologic responses, which have far-reaching effects throughout the whole body and influence many systems. And this includes the autonomic nervous system, the cardiorespiratory system, the immune system, and many others. And from humans, we also know that pain can also have adverse psychological effects, including changes in cognitive function, like impaired memory, can also disrupt sleep, and it can also contribute to depression and anxiety. So given these range of responses, it's not surprising that poorly managed pain can increase morbidity and mortality rates in the post-operative period. As we consider our approach to managing pain in a given patient, it can be helpful to consider where drugs are exerting their analgesic effects in this pain pathway. So for example, if a peripheral nerve block was performed with local anesthetic, it can successfully prevent the pain signal from ever even reaching the spinal cord, and this will dramatically minimize the need for other analgesic agents. On the other hand, if we combine medications with different mechanisms of action, such as opioids and NSAIDs, we can enhance analgesia by acting on multiple stages within the pathway. By treating pain effectively, we can minimize hospitalization time, prevent a range of detrimental physiologic changes, promote the return to regular function, and most importantly, keep our veterinary patients comfortable and improve their well-being.